All right. Okay. So, um, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, so, I'm Chloe. Uh, just to reiterate, I'm at Ithaca College in New York, and um, I'm writing an article about um, theories like Flat Earth Theory and how YouTube has kind of contributed to their growing popularity over time and just the effects that some of the recent algorithm changes have had to the YouTube community. So, sure. Does that sound good to you? Sure. Yeah, sounds okay, great. Okay, cool. All right. Awesome. Um, and then I'm recording this just so that I can quote you correctly in my article. Of so, of course, like, that's good. You can you can awesome. record. Well, I I tr honestly I treat every conversation like it's recorded anyway. So okay, yeah, because because you so, never know. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, oh, whatever. Very fair point. So yeah. anyway, um, how where do you want to start? Yep. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I think I'll just start with um what initially led you to the flat Earth community. Okay. What initially led me to it was what I like to call conspiracy boredom, meaning I knew just about, or I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could ever think of leading up to about 2014. If it was a conspiracy, I'd either heard of it and, you know, gave it my thumbs up or thumbs down. And everybody in the conspiracy community knows about Flat Earth because it can't be a conspiracy. It's, it's just silly. It's stupid, right? And mm -hmm. I thought the same thing. So I thought, okay, um, I, I will take a look at it. And that was the summer of 2014. And thought, well, I mean, I can just shoot this thing down and, and check it off my bucket list and, and be done with it. And instead of taking three days, it took nine months. And till all the way at the beginning of 2015, where I, I all of a sudden woke up in the middle of the night and said, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. There's just too many open-ended questions, so I decided to make a quick little video series. In fact, it wasn't even supposed to be started out as a series. It was just, you know, just a mm -hmm. kind of a summary and a couple of vids called Flat Earth Clues. And I put it on the internet with as much transparency as possible. I mean, I put my name, my phone number, my physical address, and just about everything you could think of, which is never recommended. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, <laughs> no. for, well, especially for women. But for men, it's not necessarily a smart idea either. And so I put it out there and said, okay, internet hive mind, show me where I screwed up. And that's where everything just started falling apart and everybody started coming at me saying, you know what, this isn't the craziest thing ever. And subject matter experts, members of all sorts of different uh, professional groups, engineers and pilots and all branches of the armed forces and uh, you you name it they all came forward and said the same thing it's like oh yeah we've heard of that the um the earth is a globe and that the earth spins but we don't take any of those calculations into our daily lives so right. and then i mean it just kept snowballing from there to where here we are four years four and a half years now uh years later mm -hmm. and i uh, i just got back from another conference in um south carolina and um, you know the big one is coming up in dallas next month not even like three weeks away and i've you know i've gotten to travel and go all to all these different places and yeah it's a huge huge thing now it's like yeah. you know between the documentary and the i mean just did a commercial mm -hmm. uh yeah it, yeah go figure um it is turned into something way way bigger than i ever thought it would be because it resonated uh, there's a lot right. of people that there, you want to know why, sorry, I know I'm taking a long time with this summary, but if you want to know the, yeah, reas okay. the reason why it resonates with people so, so easily is because we've created a model of the world or even the universe, if you want, that is now easier mm -hmm. to explain than the globe model. And people always go for the easier options. Always, always, always. And science doesn't know what to do with this because science is like, they haven't even had to really revisit this in the last 500 years. And now science has to come back and, and try to combat it. And it's very, it's a lot tougher for them than they thought because everything, it's like cement. All their foundations have been just solidified and they, they can't just, you know, it's very, very tough for them to make it, make it easier than what we've done. So anyway, how's that for an intro? Yeah. No, that works for Good. sure. For sure. Um, Okay, so if you wanted to convince someone that the Earth was flat in just one sentence, what would you say to them? One sentence. You couldn't do it in one sentence. Uh, I could plant okay. the I could <laughs> I could plant the seed in one sentence, uh, okay. and that is well. I, I mean, it's kind of generic. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll do it two ways. 
the, if I only had one sentence, I'd say, you know what? I think the world is flat, but don't take my world word for it. Do your own research and ask questions. That's that's the easy route because you know, and and I'm right. looking at because they'd have to look at me and say, okay, he seems sincere. Um, if you want some one evidence, you know, something something that would lean in our favor uh, out of the top ten that are out there, I would go with long distance photography. I would say okay. uh, f go off, go, go out somewhere and look off into the distance and tell me why you can see objects that are behind the curve. Tell me why you can see okay. it. That's that's what I would do. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, next question. So what role has um, the Flat Earth community played in kind of your social life and your career? <laughs> Uh, I'm a little different than other people because I, I've been in it so long that it is my career. Uh, right. But yeah, okay, let's let's do the career first. Um, I am now a 24-7 full-time Flat Earth advocate. I am the freshman recruiter for a metaphorical place called Flat Earth University. And uh, it is what I do. Literally, I wake up every morning and check to see how Flat Earth is doing out there. You know, I, I check all the news feeds, I check Google, I check YouTube, uh, you know, that's, that's what I see who's into it and who, who might be on the fence. And there are a lot of people, you know, 90% of our membership is in the closet. So yeah, that's, this is what I do all the time. Um, I, I mean, you know, I, I've written two books, did commercial, do public speaking things at different conferences and meetups, uh, and mm -hmm. make a whole bunch of videos. <laughs> Uh, you know, try and try right. to promote it. So yeah, all the time, all day I'm doing it. Socially, it's really interesting because even though <clears throat> I probably lost a few friends and a few family members, I have gained a lot more in that regard. Uh, people, I have got so many friends now that are into new friends. They're into flatters. And in my, mm -hmm. I mean, people I've met only over the last four or five years. And, uh, but socially, no, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. I mean, it's, it's, it's not right. just, not just because I, I'm, I've, I've gotten popular enough to where people, you know, be, people are drawn to, um, other people that are, that are in media anyway. Uh, but for me, um, because flat earth is so interesting and people want to know about it, it's going to sound weird when I say this, it kind of makes you more interesting. <laughs> But it's, yeah. but it's, but it's true. I mean, but it's not me, it's the topic. And so, yeah. but really I have spent a lot of time with a lot of flat earthers and they're really interesting people. They're open-minded. That's, that's the, the best part about flat earthers uh, is that not only is there a huge sense of community, I know there's dissension in the ranks, but they're really open-minded about a lot of things. So they're not going to shoot you down. And like me, I, I, you probably heard me say that, look, I'll never do anything malicious to anyone ever again because of Flat Earth. Uh, yeah. It is, once you're into it, you can't, you know, someone comes to you and brings up a, what seems to be a ridiculous comment beforehand. I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I'll, I might laugh you out of the room. Not anymore. I'd be hypocritical. Mm -hmm. You know, I start the day with Flat Earth. So how can I judge you? So yeah, socially it's right. it's a fascinating place. You know, I just I just did a conference in South Carolina, hung out mm -hmm. with a bunch of people. We had a couple hundred people at the conference, and uh, it was pretty good for a regional conference. And everyone, I mean, just the energy levels in the room were through the roof. Nobody wants to sleep, you know. You, you, nobody wants to mm -hmm. go home. They're just so excited about it uh, that they you know they want to tell people. And again, it it promotes a lot of enthusiasm. And people that used to be introverted are now extroverted. So there you go. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so where do you think Flat Earth would be without YouTube? Oh, without YouTube? Uh, I would yeah. be not even close to what it is now. Uh, YouTube is, for lack of a better term, the biggest television network in the world. I don't care what people say about, uh, you know, all the major networks or even Netflix. I mean, you compare the Netflix content to YouTube. And we're talking about sheer volume. Um, YouTube creates, mm -hmm. what was the stat I heard just last year? Sorry, my ride's here. One sec. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, YouTube volume versus the um, versus Netflix. Every minute of every day, there's something like 80 hours of videos being put up on YouTube. Every minute. Mm -hmm. Something to that effect. Meaning it has, it has a, that. that's right. It has a wall of content. 
absolute wall of content. So, and with it, you can find everything and anything. So it is, it is part network, part television network, part information repository. So if you want to look up how to repair a carburetor on a 1957 Chevy, you can do that. You want to know how to make the perfect omelet. You can do that. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, you want to know everything there is about every conspiracy out there. For the most part, you can. Now, they have censored some of it. Uh, false flag mm -hmm. operations, any any mass shootings, you you for patriotic reasons, uh, mostly mm -hmm. uh, you're you're not allowed to talk about those. But everything else is pretty much fair game, and so yeah, that's where flat Earth really really spread. Because you, look, if I made a, up some some videos, where am I going to put them? Where who's going distri to distribute them? And mm -hmm. there's nowhere else to go except, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, you could, you could, there's some YouTube clones out there and eventually, you know, YouTube's in this weird position because they can't censor. And I know we're, I'm probably getting too far ahead. They can't censor too much because if they did, other corporations would step in and build their own versions of YouTube. So, right. um, but yeah, without YouTube, sorry, long answer short, uh, without YouTube, flat earth wouldn't be nearly, uh, in the state that it's in now. Okay. Um, so how did YouTube's algorithm changes earlier this year, if at all, hinder like video recommendations for sites um, such as like Flat Earth sites? Oh, so, it, it, it hindered it a, a great deal. Um, mm -hmm. YouTube, and I've got mixed feelings on this uh, because one, YouTube is a private company, so technically they can do anything they want. It's not a, it's not a government, well, <laughs> depending on who you talk to. It's not a fully government. Mm -hmm. Officially, it's a stock traded company and it's a private company in dividends. I mean, it is it is a co large corporation that is owned by a larger corporation, no notably Google, which is owned by even a larger corporation than that. Um, right. So when they decided to make their changes, which was based on a, a government subcommittee meeting, it was, I think, last year when... The government came out and was and were talking to Google about this, you know, different little things about how news is being spread and fake news. And out of the three things, they 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 singled out three topics. One was uh, nine eleven, I believe. One was um, was it nine eleven? Pretty sure it was. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. I got that, got that right. Uh, second one was snake oil, and of course, the third one was flat Earth, which was interesting because they wanted to suppress several of them, but flat Earth, they said, okay, well, we're just going to not recommend it as much. And to mm -hmm. truth be told, I mean, we were being recommended heavily for three straight years. I mean, to where it was ridiculous how how much how easily we were getting out there. Didn't matter what it was, um, we were getting recommended to you. So you look up, you know, tractor maintenance, you were getting flat earth videos. You can look up potato salad recipes, you were getting flat earth videos. And there was this wonderful article, I wish I could dig it up right in front of me, uh, where this Google uh, YouTube programmer, he was asked, at, you know, he, he didn't, he, after he stopped working there and the uh, disclosure agreement passed, they asked him why things get recommended the way they do. You know, why are things recommended for you? And of all the topics, you gotta remember how many thousands of topics there are on YouTube. Out of all the topics, he picked one. And he says, well, if the average person that gets into Flat Earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're gonna recommend? And right. that was basically saying that Flat Earth was the hottest binge watching topic. And I have heard this over and over again. When people get into Flat Earth, they literally sit down and watch Flat Earth videos for like two weeks straight. That's generally the average. And right. so when YouTube, after that government meeting, you know, you can look, which is funny, you can actually look up that video on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> irony. Uh, you, they, they said, okay, we're going to curb it. And they did what they said they were going to do. They said, okay, we're not going to censor officially. We're not going to kill YouTube channels and wipe those out because again, there's still money involved here. You start killing YouTube channels and you get channels start running away from YouTube. It's only a matter of time before another, another corporations opens up their version of YouTube. They don't want that. And, right. and, and pe people, corporations are very aware of that. Um, remember there used to be something called MySpace. And mm -hmm. now there isn't, not really. And there used to be something right. called Blockbuster back in the day <laughs> and, and yeah. many other examples. People are fickle and it's just gotten faster and faster. Seriously, you could open up a YouTube clone site with real money behind it. You know, let's say Amazon. 
for example, decide what they could very easily do it. Netflix could very easily do it and just tell people it's like, we don't censor anyone for the first two years. Anyway, come on over. And, and they would people would, we would come over in yeah. droves. So when they did that, um, did it cripple us? No, it did it slow us down. Oh yeah. You bet. You bet it slowed us down that and the combination of all the heavy hitter YouTube channels that got into flat earth. So when you type in flat earth into YouTube now, the first 50 videos are all certified channels. Uh, everyone ranging from uh, ABC TV to BuzzFeed to BBC to, you know, major, major news organizations first and then entertainment like Comedy Central or The Tonight Show and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so between that and 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 the not recommending it as much, it's tougher for new YouTube channels to start with the flatter theory. Absolutely. And yeah, my my sub my sub count has has the, the the rate that it goes up because it's never gone down with flat earth but the rate it's gone up has slowed down a lot and the monetary stuff with youtube uh i mean they were sending me some not terrible checks <laughs> considering and uh you know i got uh, most of my taxes last year were were paid by you know were because of google and uh, mm -hmm. that is not that has been curbed a lot uh, Rob, right. Rob Skiba, one of our guys, said that in a meeting or a thing recently. In fact, he said it on stage. He said, yeah, I used to make quite a bit of money now. And now I don't. Um, but he's still making money. If They're just, again, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is they're not censoring us. They're just slowing us down. If they wanted to put the, it's kind of like the, the difference between hitting the brakes on your car or just taking your foot off the gas. Uh, mm -hmm. YouTube isn't hitting the brakes. They're just, we're, we've gotten so hot. In fact, I watched it just the other day, not to drag this out. But I watched a video the other day that was a debate between some flat earthers and some scientists down in, in Los Angeles. And that video was tracking so well. It was getting you know, about 100,000 hits an hour, which is good. And that was it was tracking so well that YouTube actually downgraded it for at least six or seven hours. They took it off the top of the charts and moved it down the list for the mm -hmm. better part of a day or two. And then they put it back up just to slow us down you know if they wanted to they could kill it uh you people don't understand how easy it is to curb things in software if you didn't want you know flat earth to be recommended in youtube it's simple simple programming uh same thing with google if you didn't want flat earth to be recommended in google simple simple programming. Just, you just don't allow it to happen you you can do that and they, again they're they're slowing it down so sorry there, there's my ramble for that yeah no that was great um so kind of switching topics a bit. Mm -hmm. So how has the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve negatively and positively impacted the Flat Earth community? Uh, I don't think there was any negative side to it except that the Flat Earth community hated it. <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning the Flat Earth, yeah, and I, it was what I predicted. Everybody, because I, I was literally the first person to see it. Um, <laughs> I saw it in a hotel room before the premiere at the Toronto Film Festival in, uh, was that early last year? Yeah, it was early last year. And mm -hmm. what happened was, uh, and I predicted, I said, look, Flat Earth community is going to hate it, but the rest of the world is going to think it's really, really interesting. They're not going to love it, but they're going to think it's really interesting. And I saw this firsthand. I, I got a chance to go around to different film festivals um, in the United States and Canada and see how it played. And I sat in the audience with, with these people. And it was fascinating because like the first 20, 30 minutes, most of the people in the audience didn't even think it was real. They thought it was a, a <laughs> skit or a parody or something or a piece of docu-fiction. They honestly did not know. And then about 20, 30 minutes in, all of a sudden they're looking and they're going, wait a minute. And you could see them like nudging each other. It's like, I think this is actually a real thing. And they <laughs> freaked them out because... It's like finding a giant corner of the internet that you didn't even know existed. I mean, it's and it's really, really big. You're going, I've been on the internet for 10, 15 years. Where did this come from? Uh, you know, it's like opening a, a, a small door in the room of a mansion and finding a whole other mansion. And that's that's really what it was. And so the community, it didn't, well, I will say this, it, it did rally the community to make their own documentaries, which was good. I mean, we generated more content b because of that document, because of Behind the Curve than, than anything else. It was really inspiring in that regards because they hated it. Um, outside the community, though, no, it couldn't have, uh, it was it was our Trojan horse. 
um, even the title behind the curve makes the audience feel safe. It's like, oh, well, we're just going to make fun of Flat Earth. It's going to be funny. It's going to be a comedy. Right. And that never changed. I mean, I, I've gotten so many interviews and so many things. But it wasn't just the documentary. The documentary, here, let me, let me change gears here. The documentary wasn't expected to do anything. Even the producers. You, you don't understand how small a percentage of documentaries even get allowed into film festivals. There were 3,000 submissions to the Toronto Festival alone. They only pick mm -hmm. a 100 films, and we got in. Mm -hmm. And then out of those 100 films, we were always making the top 10 list. And then, But even then, the producers like, well, it's, it's take a year and a half to two years to sell, if it sells at all. It was picked up immediately by Amazon yeah. and iTunes, and then finally Netflix at the end of... Um, Wow, was it, was it 2018? Oh, no. Yeah, I remember watching it early 2018. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Netflix picked it up. I'm sorry, I'm losing track of time. Um, yeah. The uh, Netflix picked it up, and that's when it exploded because apparently everybody under the age of 30 has Netflix. And yeah. <laughs> it is. It just, it just went, and they recommended it on top of it. So it became, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was on the far left of their, of their playlist. And it was, it was getting traction. And so they kept it there for a while, for months. And it got more and more traction to where people were, you know, people I haven't talked to in year, high school friends were calling me up. Going, it's going, mm -hmm. dude, I saw you on TV. It's like, oh God. <laughs> so that, but that was really cool. So, so it became our Trojan horse. And now, I mean, and it opened up more doors. In fact, where it really helped, and I'll end, I'll end this part with this. What really helped was it gave the media an, a, a pass. It gave them an excuse to talk about it. Because beforehand, if you wanted to run a story on Flat Earth, you had to dig up some Flat Earthers or do some research. Now, if you wanted to run a story on Flat Earth, all you had to do was watch a movie. Literally, you could just right. fire up Netflix. And a lot of people, I mean, a bunch of the interviews I've done recently, they haven't even looked at anything else. All they looked at was the documentary. And then, then they, mm -hmm. you know, in fact, some people didn't even bother looking me up on, on the internet. They went to like the producers of the film say, Hey, do you have Mark's contact info? And, and they get a hold of me through that. So no, I mean, all right. That being said, last part, would I have changed anything about the documentary? Yeah, I probably would have changed a few things. I definitely wouldn't mm -hmm. have taken a shot at Bob. I definitely wouldn't have taken a shot at Jaron at the end. Uh, the, other than that, though, I thought it was a very fair look at 2017 and the community and what we were doing. And uh, it was supposed to be a human interest piece. And the producers at the end and the director hated the topic by the time they got to the end. Oh, they're still absolutely <laughs> globalist. No question. But it was mostly because they, they were afraid of what, how we might affect the future. Uh, same thing that National Geographic asked me. It's like, it's like, isn't it true that, you know, or don't you think that Flat Earth might might even potentially bring about the next Dark Ages? Uh, I said, well, I don't know about that. I mean, it's not like we're burning down libraries or anything, but um, but it's a fair question. But remember who it's coming from. It's coming from National Geographic. You know, they're a very science-based uh, cheerleading network. So anyway, there you mm -hmm. go. Um, yeah, so just a couple more things. No. So in describing flat earthers, people sometimes use the word denialism. How would you react to that description? Um, so well, you mean like science deniers, that sort of thing? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not really a fair statement. And here's why, because it's different from any other conspiracy, because people going into flat earth don't like flat earth. They hate it. I hated it. I, in fact, one of my new things that I've been saying is, look, every day I wake up and I try to destroy Flat Earth, and every day I fail. I'd love to see Flat Earth go away, but it won't. In fact, I started out, um, as you know, you know, putting my videos out there saying, look, I don't think it's a globe anymore. Show me where I went wrong, because I was hoping someone would prove me wrong. Everybody going into this, the T-shirt the literally reads, I became a Flat Earther because I tried to disprove it. Uh, everybody goes in and says, um, okay, you know, the flat earth is obviously stupid. It's kind of like, um, uh, the, the, the La Brea tar pits, if you know what those are. Um, they're, mm -hmm. they're these sticky faucet, this oily sludge that you get sucked into like quicksand. And what would happen is, um, 
prey, you know, w- uh, an animal would fall into it and be struggling, you know, before it went down. And then like a predator would come up. It's like, oh, I got you. And then he'd go in and he'd be struggling to go down on another predator. It was just this never ending, you know, chain of the things that would fall into this damn stuff. And that's what happens with us. Everybody that gets into flat earth thinks that they can disprove it. Everybody's like, oh yeah, well, it's stupid. And I should be able to shut this thing down in two seconds. And they end up getting sucked in. Uh, and the proof there, if you want, you know, the, is the numbers, which is uh, we have a 99% retention rate. Once you're in, you don't get out. And mm-hmm. that's, that's higher than any other organized or unorganized group, including all your major religions. They're all that way. I mean, 99%, that's ridiculous. That shouldn't even be possible. It's because once you go in, even if you're not enthusiastic, there's nothing to go back to because you destroyed the globe on your way in yourself. Meaning you, uh, in the process of trying to take down flat earth, you took down the globe. It's it's a fascinating, uh, uh, in fact, there's probably going to be psychological studies done, done on this down the road. Because it's right. everybody that tries. I mean, even me. It's like even, it's kind of like, which is why we kind of compare it to the Matrix from time to time. You, if you ever remember the movie from 20 years ago. Um, yeah. Which is, you know, even if you could go back to the Matrix, would you want to? There's nothing, right. you know, it doesn't have the same feel. You've lost, uh, it's, it's, you have a different perspective on it. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that pretty much covers it for me. Um, thank oh. you so much for taking the time. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy, happy to do it. Um, I will, I will email you my side of the audio as well. Cause I don't know how, oh. cause I, I recorded, I, I, I record all this stuff mostly because on the on the other side, people again, if you're recording through your phone, the audio quality isn't that great, and um, I've got yeah. I've got high bandwidths, and I do a lot of these, so it's like, ah, hey, here, take take mine. Oh, um, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll I'll email to you in the next uh, or send it through WeTransfer, depending on how big it is. It's probably going to be bigger than an email file in the next right. uh, fifteen minutes. If you need okay. you need anything else, if you need images, or if you want to talk to anybody else, let me know. I'm pretty much wired into to the community. And yeah. um, but other than that, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Have a great day. All right, you too. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.